Hey, what's going on? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone. Today we're going to talk about five things that every guitar player uh, should know. So about guitar maintenance. The thing about it is if you know this stuff, you're going to save yourself some money and probably some headache. Before we get going on this video, today's video is sponsored by Audible. If you haven't heard of them before, you can click the link below. There is a trial. Currently, I am listening to an audiobook called Black Elk Speaks about Native American history. Super, super cool. I think people should still use books to educate themselves and not just the internets. And so that's the way I do it because it saves me a lot of time because I can do it while I'm working and stuff. So check out Audible, check out the link below, check out the trial. Thanks for sponsoring this video, Audible. Okay, thing number one that I think every guitar player should kind of get a grasp and understanding of is understanding temperature and humidity as it relates to your guitar. Temperature, let's just get that one out of the way quickly. Unless you have a vintage instrument with a nitro finish, uh, or even a newer instrument with a nitro finish, you don't really need to worry so much about temperature. Modern urethane finishes are gonna be a lot more durable to temperature changes. Do you remember that video? We'll put a link to it up here where we took a Squire Strat and we put it in my truck and we left it overnight. It was like 19 degrees outside, 20 degrees outside. Everything was fine in the morning. The setup was fine. Temperature does not really affect much except for certain kinds of finishes. So we don't need to worry about that so much. Humidity is the big one because guitars mostly are made of wood. You're going to have moisture entering the guitar and leaving the guitar as the humidity rises and lowers. As the moisture enters the guitar, it's going to expand slightly. Now on an electric guitar, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. People really think that humidity is really going to hurt an electric guitar, but actually since the wood is two inches thick, it's just a big slab of wood, it doesn't really affect it a whole lot. The neck, however, if you have an open pour uh, fretboard, for instance, like a uh, rosewood fretboard uh, can really be affected by humidity changes because when it dries out it shrinks and you can get fretboard sprout and you can have binding crack and stuff like that and when it's too humid uh, then you can have swelling and cracking and other problems the other thing is it can definitely affect your neck relief the flatness of your fretboard the playing surface it can have more relief and less relief as humidity changes. So you want to keep your environment where you store your guitars about 50 to 60 percent humidity and you want to have that as even as possible and you know like you might have to use an in-case humidifier. Uh, I always have a hygrometer you know one of the things that tells you how humid the air is. Um, we'll put a link to a couple of those things that I suggest in this the description of this video um, because if you get those it's not a lot of money and then you can have it either in the room where you store your guitars or in individual cases to make sure that your guitars stay awesome. Number two of our five things is gonna be actually storage itself. So that's kind of related to the first one. In fact, everything we're gonna talk about is actually related to the first one. So the humidity and temperature thing is super important. Storage. Obviously, you don't want your guitar to get knocked over. You don't want the cat to knock it over. You don't want your kids to knock it over. Uh, you don't want to bang the peg head on something, obviously, right? So we want to have, be safe. But the problem is, is that we want to be able to grab our guitar whenever. We want to be able to be sitting in the living room and grab a guitar. So how do we store it? There's been all kinds of myths and crazy stuff about hanging your guitars and how it puts undue stress on. It's a bunch of absolute baloney. I personally use wall hangers to hang my guitar that I play all the time, that I'm playing constantly. But if I do not, then I always put it in a case. The reason is, it goes back to number one humidity it's easier to control the environment that the guitar is stored in if it's kept in a case because it's easier to control just that small space and not the whole room uh, varying all the time with season and temperature when it comes to cases everybody loves hard shell cases personally i don't the reason is is because if i have a lot of guitars they stack up they take up a lot of room and I use like a professional style gig bag, for example, like a mono bag or a Gator Transit. I use a Gator Pro Go for my acoustic guitar, which I really, really like. Gig bag used to be like a cheap out kind of thing, right? Like you only got a gig bag if it was a cheap guitar. That's not the case anymore. Gig bags are actually more expensive than hard shell cases because this technology has come up to par and they're really, really awesome. Plus you can just throw them on your back and go wherever you want. 
but I would definitely suggest keeping your guitar in a case if you're gonna leave it sitting for any period of time because of that humidity temperature thing. Okay, so the third thing on our list, uh, cleaning. Cleaning is maintenance, and it's more important than just keeping your guitar shiny. I know a lot of people wanna leave the goo on their guitar for the sake of mojo and stuff, but here's the deal. That goo, more often than not, comes from your hands, and depending on the chemical makeup of your particular body, because everybody's different, it can be very corrosive to the hardware on your guitar. Here's the problem with that. If you go to do maintenance, change the saddle height on your guitar, um, adjust anything in your bridge, any of that kind of stuff, uh, that, cor that corrosion can make it super difficult to work on. In fact, it can make it tough uh, to do anything without stripping out screws or nuts or Allen keys or anything like that. Wipe your guitar down. Somebody just sent me a link this morning to some article where some famous guitar player was like, I think the grime on my humbuckers makes my SG sound different. And I was like, come on, man, just clean your guitar. When it comes to cleaning your guitar, make sure that you use proper materials. A lot of people want to default to household products. And I know that people will get in the comments and say, I've been doing it this way for 20 years and nothing is wrong. But using ammonia based products, which would be like Windex and stuff, using stuff with silicone in it, like uh, any kind of household polishes, car wax, uh, furniture polish, that kind of stuff, not good for your guitar. I know there's a lot of argument about this on the internet, but I don't use it because I don't want it in my shop contaminating any of my other work. So we don't use anything with any kind of silicone in it. I don't use naphtha on fretboards. The trick with that stuff is it evaporates so quickly, it pulls moisture right out of the wood. And as we discussed earlier, humidity balance is everything. People will argue with me about that in the comments, but if you use something proper, for example, like a, a fretboard oil, only once or twice a year, you don't have to do it all the time, but just to clean your fretboard, it's not a moisturizing thing. Oil does not moisturize your fretboard. It does not humidify your fretboard. Humidity does that. So humidity balanced going back to our very first thing. So just remember that fretboard oil is really just for cleaning a fretboard and doing it without having any kind of harsh solvents or anything that hurt anything. Uh, we use a Carnuba based guitar polish. I'll put links to all this stuff in the description that we use. Um, I really like the stuff. Uh, we'll put it down there and I think you'll dig it. Keep your guitar clean. It'll be easier to maintain and your tech will love you for it if you do bring your guitar to have it maintained. Number four is gonna be understanding string gauges and string changes. So one of the things that moves around the most on a guitar, and I always say this and, and just think about this just for a second. If you go away from your guitar and you come back and it doesn't play the way it played the last time you played it, the only thing that could change without you touching it is the neck relief which is affected by storage and humidity changes in the air. If you've gone away from your guitar and then come back and it plays differently, your action hasn't changed, your saddle height, all that stuff hasn't changed because you have to actually turn that with a wrench. The only thing that has changed while you've been gone is neck relief. One of the biggest factors in that is understanding string, ja string gauges and using and having the guitar set up properly for the string gauge that you always play and staying consistent to that. The other thing that will save you money, because I know a lot of people actually take their guitars to a place to have their strings changed. If you learn how to do this yourself, uh, it's gonna save you a lot of money and it's gonna help you get to know your guitar a little bit. You don't need to get complicated with string changes. You don't need to tie funny knots down at the end because you think the strings are gonna slip. Just three or four wraps. I'll tell you what I do. I pull the string through, I pull it back about this far, and then I string the guitar up. Tune it up to pitch, stretch the strings, tune it again, and you'll be just fine. Maybe we'll make a video specifically about that, but this is one of those overlooked things, and I think experienced players take it for granted, but I know that a lot of newer players, um, they will. They'll bring their guitar to Guitar Center somewhere to have their strings changed. And it probably costs five or eight bucks to do that on top of the set of strings. If you get to do this yourself, It'll save you a lot of money and like I said you'll get to know your instrument a lot better. The last thing is I would make sure that you invest in a proper set of tools to work on your guitar. Um, it sounds way more complicated than it is. It is actually really enjoyable to do your own maintenance, 
to learn this stuff and to do basic adjustments like string changes, uh, neck relief, saddle height, and that sort of thing. You know, there's gonna be a couple things like replacing a nut, for example, that you may never ever really feel comfortable with doing and have to take it somewhere. But really, if you played the same guitar for five or six years, maybe if you played it a lot, you would only have to do that once. And all this other maintenance, cleaning and maintenance and setup and tuning and all that sort of stuff, you could do yourself with a basic set of tools. I really like the Cruise Tools stuff. You've heard me talk about it a lot. In fact, if you comment in this video, we're giving away at the end of this week during our live show, we're giving away a set of Cruise Tools. We're giving away a Korg tuner. We're giving away a Hercules neck rest to do some maintenance. And we're giving away a fretboard polishing kit from Lizard Spit and a couple of other little goodies from Lizard Spit as a complete maintenance kit. So if you comment in this video below, uh, make sure you do that right away and make sure that you're subscribed. We're giving away this whole thing, I think on Thursday of this week. So this upcoming, uh, at the end of February, we're gonna give away that kit. That is based on and made possible by everybody over on Patreon, patreon.com. If you check that out and you, you're a part of that, what you're doing is you're, commu you're contributing towards us being able to give away these little things like this, uh, hopefully every month. I'm pretty excited about that. The other thing that's cool about the Patreon thing is we're doing the live video on Thursday every morning. And if you can't make it to that live video, that will guarantee you, if you're over there on Patreon and ask a question, it will guarantee that I answer that question during that FAQ and it doesn't get missed even if you can't make it to that thing. So it's pretty sweet. Thanks for hanging out and talking to me about these five things. Put to in the, just the comments of this video what you think uh, are important things. Maybe that I missed or maybe expand on some things, maybe some stuff you know, uh, and we can all talk about it as a community in the comments below. Be nice, obviously, and do me a favor and subscribe, like this video, share it with everybody, do the stuff. Stay tuned on Thursday for the live thing where we give that stuff away. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you soon. My name is Dylan. This has been Dylan Talkstone.